This is the Maine Report, a public affairs program produced by the New England School of Communications. Welcome to the main report. I'm Chris Zahor. Our topic today is the always changing photography field. Advancements in technology and the growth of the internet are some of the many factors that have contributed to these changes. Our guest today is Nescom instructor Larry Ayot. Larry teaches courses in digital photography and photojournalism. He has spent over 30 years in professional photography and videography. Larry currently works as a staff photographer at Terralar Advertising Productions, providing commercial photography services, services throughout Maine. Larry, thank you for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. So first, tell us a little bit about how and why you got into the photography field. Well, I kind of fell into it. I, I was in the service and a friend of mine had just bought a 35 millimeter camera and, and I liked the pictures he got out of it and I asked him, I said, well, how do you, how do you take this, how does this work? And he went and explained it to me and I went out and I bought a camera and it's since 1978, that was 1978 when that happened. And what kind of camera did you start off with? It was a Hanamex 35 millimeter. It had a 50 millimeter and a 135 millimeter lens with a really, really basic flash. And how is that different from cameras that we use now? Uh, a little different. It, it, it shot with film, obviously. <clears throat> the cameras nowadays are a little more sophisticated with the electronics, but the basic method of making an exposure keeping, if you've, if you've heard of any of my photography students talk about putting the needle in the middle, uh, it, basically both cameras operate the same way from a user, user's perspective. Uh, what are some of the things that you enjoy most about taking photographs? Uh, I like the, me, the ability to uh, see a photograph before it's created. So basically it's kind of like a challenge. Every, every setup's different, every photography, uh, uh, opportunities, uh, it, they're all different, so uh, the, the challenge of it, I like the challenging, and I, I, I really like lighting. I like approaches to lighting and things like that. So we mentioned that you teach photography courses. What do you think is important, or why is it important for students to learn about photography? Well, it's important because uh, students need to become visually literate. And one of the things that's happening right now is there's a flood of images on Facebook and any other type of social media. And, and people are accepting the fact that taking a photograph with an automatic camera is acceptable, which it does, res it does take some amazing pictures, but there's no effort, there's no discipline associated with it. So with photography, one of the biggest challenges I have is to break them away from that habit and understand how the process works within the camera so that they can extract out of there even better results. You mentioned the internet um, how and social media. How has that changed the photography field? <clears throat> Dramatically. We have an increasing amount of, we have an abundant amount of photographers, uh, but we have an abundant amount of photographers who know nothing about photography. So the literacy part of it is basically, the visual literacy part of it is to make sure that students understand uh, composition, understand lens perspective, understand exposure control, and even a little bit of the processing in Photoshop afterwards. A lot of people think Photoshop processing is just, it, it's more or less, uh, Photoshop's a cliche now, it's just a term. The process of adjusting tonality in an image, uh, a lot of people don't do it. They don't understand it and they stay away from it. So they just take the image given to them by the camera and post it. And which is unfortunate because that camera is taking a lot more information than they're actually using. Right. Um, obviously, we we all have cell phones. Yeah. Um, how have camera phones changed the field of photography? Well, it it's changed it in giving people more confidence than they should have. It's still relatively a very small folder or a small. Uh, uh, image size that comes out of those digital cameras. Marketing has pushed it into the megapixel arena and said, oh, this has got X number of megapixels. But if it's a low res image, it's a low res image. And one of the things that people don't know about the cell phone, or they're aware of it, but they don't really know or talk about it, is that they're stuck on wide angle. They're a wide angle lens. So if you're taking a photograph of yourself, uh, a selfie or something like that, they're perfect. But if you're actually taking a portrait of a person, the worst possible lens to use is a wide angle lens because of what it does to your nose and your ears and it just, it just distorts the perspective so much that uh, 
it, it, it's really interesting to see how people feel that these are acceptable portraits. It's going to change how people see portraits, but in the long term, uh, telephoto lenses will still be used for portraiture in the in the in the correct in the professional field. So, what positives are there that could come from people being cell phone photographers? Like, well, it's it's really neat for documentation purposes. If you've got to take a photograph of something that has just happened, uh, I can see there's some benefits to it with on the scene journalism, where if you don't have time to grab anything. Uh, you can use a cell phone and it can it can get you by. It can do a fairly decent job. Um, so it, it, if you're if you're into uh, taking pictures for insurance reasons or anything like that, it's excellent. And and if you're if you know what you're doing with a cell phone and you know how to process a cell phone image, they res the results are amazing. You can take some amazing photographs with a cell phone, just as long as you understand the parameters it's operating in. Would you say that having access to a camera right on your phone, does that uh, spark interest in some people to uh, go to further down the path of photography? That's hard to say. Uh, I think uh, a lot of students who take the photography class here have been intrigued by their cell phone camera. But they, th those people, I think, are disappointed with the results. And they're disappointed with the, the limitations that a cell phone camera has. And so those, those typically are the ones who pursue photography. And those are the ones who break away from the herd and say, OK, that's really nice and stuff. But I know I can get a better image. I know there's another process here. And, that, and that's part of rediscovering photography, which is kind of like what's happening right now. There's, uh, uh, we're, we're entering a period of time after the early 19, uh, 19 uh, the early 2000s, where digital photography really hit the market hard with the 8 megapixel camera. Now uh, we're seeing kind of like uh, photo digital photography fatigue, and people are looking for more. And so I've discovered that, or I've seen that people are coming back to photography, but approaching it from the older perspective of what was there prior to digital, which is still photography. It's just the digital component of it kind of disrupted things for a little while. Right. All right. Well, that's all the time we have for our first segment. I'm Chris Zahor with The Main Report. We'll be back after a break. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Searching for help with Dachshund reading. No. <laughs> Let me try. Sarah's bright, but when she's reading, she has trouble sounding out words. Playing world music. What? I give up. Wait, I was trying to show you how Sarah feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues to help your child thrive. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000. It's quiet. Fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back to The Main Report. I'm Chris Zahor, joined by Larry Ayotte. We're discussing some of the changes in the photography field. So we mentioned some of the changes with the internet and things like that. Um, where do you see jobs or how, where will students be finding jobs coming out of photography school? That's a very difficult question because there are, uh, I just heard recently there was a very famous photography school in Massachusetts that has just closed down because of the lack of enrollment. So I'm, I'm thinking more what's going to happen with photography is that it'll become more of an, in, in, uh, they'll be more embedded within a corporation. There won't be so much them looking for different photographers but relying on the staff that they have and people who are interested in photography. So um, the photo class that is taught here is specifically designed to enhance whatever a student is going into. So if they're going into video or cinema, uh, it helps with lens perspective and composition. If they're going into marketing, a lot of marketing places do not have the, their own photographers. They have to hire from outside because simply they just don't feel as though they can afford to have somebody internally. So if a student goes into a, a situation where they can work for somebody, 
um, it's awesome to have that skill. It's, a, it's an added check on their resume that says, hey, I know how to do this and I know how to do it well. So that's what I think the industry is heading more towards. Are there a lot of jobs in journalism as well that students would find? Uh, journalism, I think a journalism student needs to know about photography because they are in a situation where uh, either they're in a, in a breaking news situation or they're doing a feature story or, or things of that nature. And, and because of that, they need to know how to light people. They need to know what the best angle is. They need to know how to approach things that look interesting to the viewer. There's, there's been a recent survey done by the National Press Photographers Association that took about 60 people and they showed them images that were taken with a cell phone, non-professional, and professional images. And the overwhelming result of that was people can tell the difference between a bad photograph and a professionally done photograph. So that will emerge in the future where people will go back to relying on people who know what they're doing instead of the gutting of, of uh, a lot of newspapers send their, their reporters out with cell phones. And the pictures are, are abysmal. They do not represent the, the story. And, and that's the bottom line. And that goes full circle to the visual literacy. So if you have somebody who has no idea what they're looking at and they're just w randomly taking a photograph, the viewer is aware of that and it cheapens it cheapens their process. So wh whatever they're associated with in the inter internet or, or the newspaper or anything like that. Yep. So you would say that newspapers, are they just expecting their journalists to be able to use these photography skills so that they don't have to hire other photographers? I, I don't know. I don't know what the, uh, I, I've seen this internet uh, thing occur over, the, uh, over the, the last 20 years and it's been very disappointing for me to see colleagues in different places in journalism lose their jobs or, or uh, this be, become displaced because there's a lack of appreciation for the visual literacy component of a photograph. So I, I think it's like any time anytime you have a change as great as this one was in a medium, there's always the initial explosion of, yeah, we don't have to hire people who know what they're doing anymore only to find out that after a certain amount of time, the trickle starts coming back, say, yeah, we really need to hire somebody who knows what they're doing. Video experienced this when um, motion picture, or not motion picture, but TV stations were all using 16 millimeter or eight millimeter film back in the late 70s. And when videotape came out, three quarter inch videotape, they felt that they could get rid of all their, their film people and just hire anybody. And the unfortunate thing about that was that was an industry that corrected itself relatively quickly because uh, they, they, they had a school in Oklahoma that you could go to for uh, the Oklahoma University of Oklahoma. It was a video workshop specifically geared towards these people who had no experience at all with shooting. And so they would set up these video seminars and uh, it was, I, I had an opportunity to become a participant in one of those and it was absolutely brutal but I learned so much from it. And it all went back to basic knowledge that was just taken for granted maybe 10, 15 years before that never got caught up with the technology. So that industry showed us not to do that. The photography industry, I think, is in the throes of that right now of, of, not, of realizing that they need to hire people who know what they're doing. So it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, so some companies may have overreacted and thought, you know, we can yeah. ditch the photographers. We've got all these advancements and then they realize yeah. it's something that they do need. The, the camera automatically does not register properly. It, 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 it just makes an 18% gray exposure, which you probably are aware of. And when, you, when I look at photographs that are, are undisciplined, I can see that it's an undisciplined photograph. I can tell. It just has all the hallmarks of amateurish looking. And then when you see a professional photograph, the composition, lens perspective, if there are whites or black tones in the photograph, if there's a little bit of the gray tone, these are all things that we have since birth, if we've ever watched television or looked at magazines or looked at photographs, we, inter we internally are trained to see this. And that's why people looking at these photographs now can tell the difference because they know. They can't, they can't tell you why, but they understand it. All right. Well, that's all the time we have for today's main report. Thank you, Larry Ayotte, for coming on and joining us. Thanks for having me. Talking about photography. 
I'm Chris Zellhorth. Thank you for watching The Main Report.